This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. I've been in the mood for some nostalgia as of late, if that wasn't obvious from the videos released so far this year. But what to choose? This is usually where I'd set up a wheel introduction, and that is coming soon, but today I knew what I wanted to platinum next. I don't know why, but the Mafia series has been calling my name recently, and I finally listened. Now, the original Mafia released back in 2002 for the PS2, Xbox, and PC, and obviously I didn't play it back then as I was only 5 at the time but I did play it sometime between then and Mafia 2's release. I remember the game kicking my butt and not controlling very well, but something about this game just sank its hooks into me, and I've been a fan of the Mafia series ever since, with Mafia 2 being one of my favourite games of all time. But with that being said, I've still not played the definitive edition of Mafia. Don't ask me why, I honestly don't know what's taken me so long, but it changes today. It's time to head back to the 1930s and after all these years re-experience Tommy Angelo's story whilst also more than likely actually comprehending what's going on this time. But first, what type of platinum journey are we getting ourselves into this time? Well, according to PSM Profiles, Mafia ranks at about a 6 out of 10 in terms of difficulty, should take around 25 hours to complete, and if you listen to the guide, also takes 2 playthroughs. We'll be doing it in one one though because we're god gamers and also it makes absolutely no sense to split this up into multiple playthroughs as you'll see soon. As always if you do end up enjoying the content be sure to like the video, comment below some more platinums you'd like to see me tackle next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and go over to twitch.tv slash mayorhairbear if you want to see some of these platinum journeys live. Now before we get started, we need to keep a couple of things in mind for Mafia's Platinum to make this as seamless an experience as possible. First and most important is for the trophy Made Man, which requires us to beat the game on Classic difficulty. This is where that 6 out of 10 difficulty comes from, as Classic is no slouch. Police are more vigilant and will be on your ass over everything. Enemies do more damage you take less, all the way to more slippery car controls, and when you reload your gun, if you had any ammo in the mag, that's now gone. Second, and this is just as important as not doing this, basically involves completing a second playthrough, and that is making sure we keep an eye out for the many, many collectibles in the game for the trophy, the whole story, which is for completing the collection, and a good number of said collection are only located in the 20 missions. Meaning if you miss them your first time through, you need to replay the mission again to obtain them. So get that guide ready, boot up a new game, and let's get started. Oh, and spoilers ahead. Mafia is set in the 1930s Lost Heaven, Illinois, during the final years of the Prohibition. We take on the role of Tommy Angelo, a cab driver who is just barely scraping by, working the night shift to try and grab some more cash. Just our luck, two members of the Salieri crime family, Paulie and Sam, hold Tommy at gunpoint to help them escape an ambush from the Morello family, the bad guys. With our slick driving skills, we do just that, and are compensated handsomely for our services, even getting a job offer to boot. And chase through the night. Is chapter one done already? See, classic's not that bad. <laughs> We don't have long to mull it over though, as some of Morello's thugs track us down, smash up our cab, and force us to take up that job and join the Salieri family. The back streets of Little Italy. Jesus, we're smashing through the chapters. How many chapters are in this game? Half an hour in. <laughs> Tommy is welcomed with open arms, and as our first job, we get to enact some sweet justice of our own by destroying some of Morello's cars, and with the job well done, we earn the Don, Paulie, and Sam's respect. The way this city works. It doesn't take long for Tommy to ingratiate himself with the family, mainly as a driver from job to job, collecting money owed, until one job goes tits up. Paulie is shot, Sam is captured, and we need to blast our way through and get him back. Getting our first taste of our new life. Gangs of Lost Heaven. Our next chapter though is where people lose their minds. This is the hardest chapter in our classic playthrough, or at least that's what I've heard. That's right, it's the infamous 
race. Little Italy has a lot of money on an unbeatable kid to win, but a European has entered the race who might just beat him. So we steal his car, fuck with it, and return it, ready for a race terribly run for him. Only to get to race day, and turns out Morello's taken our racer out of the running altogether, and Tommy needs to step in and win this thing himself. Now don't get me wrong, this race is tough, and it was infuriating. This doesn't seem that bad. But we'll see how long it takes me to actually do. Off! Okay, this is starting to annoy me because it's so easy to spin out. I'm not, I'm barely doing anything. Like, oh, my first race has been my best race so far. It's fucking annoying. Fuck off, fucking loser. Your bum ass isn't even gonna win the race, so why are you fing it up for me? I didn't. Oh, I hate these brake jacking old pieces of garbage. Ugh. You fing dogs, man. You're a fing dog. All of you fucking drivers. Yeah, that's what I want. Ram, why would you do that? Yeah, Ram will save you from spinning out. <laughs> and do jack shit there. Step up even worse. I'm not going to pretend I didn't struggle here, but from what I'd heard to what I'd experienced, this felt very overblown. Yes, the car controls are slippery. You can spin out a lot. You need to be within the top four by the fourth or so turn, otherwise it's just a bit too much of an uphill battle. And I'll be honest, it is stressful, especially when you finally hit the lead. But this only took me 45 minutes or so of trying to get right, and that was with some very simple tips, like cutting the grass on the first couple of turns will leapfrog you position wise or extend your lead. Tap the brakes or simply let go of the accelerator to avoid spinning out. If you feel yourself spinning out, try pressing the ram button to level out. It doesn't always work, but more often than not. Remember, three cars have to wipe out in the race, so the higher up you are, the easier it is to take first place when your competition is destined to fail. Those types of things. Honestly, if you need more help, watch the tips video on the Mafia YouTube channel. It is a lifesaver and it breaks it all down really well. But point is, we did finally win this race. Yes, <laughs> we did it. Oh, it didn't even take us an hour. It was close to an hour, but it didn't take us quite an hour. Supercharged. Apparently that's the hardest part about this whole thing, so let's go. Oh my god, I started sweating so badly at the end of that race. With a race well run and being the hero of Little Italy, it was time to take Paulie home. Or at least to the brothel for the only missable trophy in the game. Not classy. Neighborhood hero. <laughs> That's a loaded one for trophies. That's three trophies for one chapter. Salieri's bartender Luigi asks Tommy if he can walk his daughter Sarah home. Some thugs try and get lucky, but after a swift kick in the ass, we manage to get Sarah home safe. Good night for a walk anyways. It's a short, sharp little chapter there. The Don is not pleased about this one bit though, and sends Tommy and Paulie to teach them a lesson, which... Uh... I think a pretty strong lesson was taught, but it does foreshadow a poor mob quality in Tommy. Boy just lets too many people live. Storm cloud over Chinatown. Unfortunately for us, one of those boys was the son of a corrupt city councillor who vows revenge and somehow the other thug survived and knows exactly who we are. So time to tie up some loose ends. We need to set up a distraction and to do that we need to set off an explosion in a gentleman's club, formerly one of ours, now turned to Morello. On the way to the whorehouse, I do get pulled over by the cops and like a good boy, and since there's no money system in Mafia, pay the fine. Lined pockets, there we go. Sam begs us to let his favorite uh, companion live, which we do as a favor. Shit. 
Is this... We got indestructible bloody bushes. <laughs> Women in the 40s be like. <laughs> and blow the place sky high before attending a scumbag's funeral and having Sam save us by capping the other witness. Murder in the house of God. Tommy gets called in for a late night shipment to help Paulie and Sam with the latest shipment of that quality Canadian liquor. But of course, nothing goes to plan. Sam's missing and Morello's dirty cops are everywhere upon reaching the drop off. Sam's been shot, held up in a barn and after fending off waves of cops, we grab the booze and make our escape. On my way home to Sarah, lockpicking my fifth car. Car enthusiast. Your Canuck cousins. It's from this point things really start going sideways or at least begin the downfall as Frank, the bookkeeper for Salieri over the years, has gone to the feds and plans to give up the family. So we need to track him down all the way to the airport, surrounded by feds and held up in a hangar. But after all that death leading to this point, Tommy gets sweet yet again and lets Frank and his family leave as long as he can return the books to Salieri, which he agrees and flees the country. By the way, I'm not saying Tommy letting people live is a bad human quality, just a quality that will lead to his own demise. Just wanted to clear that up because I realize it makes me sound psychotic. Rat in the house. More information has been leaked about us to Morello, who is using his political alliances to take action, which is where Tommy and a world-renowned locksmith go to break into a safe and steal that information back. We find the safe, grab the info, but blow the alarm and run with our tails between our legs. <laughs> Blood on beach hill. That might be the worst lock pick ever. After our mess with the Canadians, a prime opportunity to steal Morello's liquor supplier comes through and we jump on it. Shocker, this also goes tits up as we need to escort the truck through the city, which is easier said than done. What the hell? It's like, I don't want to die anymore. I can't... What the fuck? I can't kill them quick enough. How? Best laid plans. Probably the toughest mission so far outside of um, the race. After all our hard work though, not long after the prohibition ended and the biggest source of coin was up in flames. Salieri split the income sources up between legal and illegal means, except for dope peddling. Never dope peddling. Tommy and Sarah even got married and had a kid in all this time. Things were looking up. Salieri asked Tommy to take him to lunch since his driver had taken the day off. We sit down for a nice meal and boom. Morello's thugs shoot up the restaurant. Tommy manages to flank Morello's men and save Salieri, realizing his driver had been talking with Morello and teaching the rat a lesson. This was all out war now. The day the war began. Nice short sharp mission, we like that. Morello has too many people in high places though, so first we need to start knocking them off. First off, the city councillor who's having a party on a steamboat. So we make ourselves look the part, sneak aboard the ship, take out the scumbag under cover of some beautiful fireworks, and with the help of Sam and Paulie, leave the ship in a panic. Death on the water. Next up, Morello's brother. Method, placing a bomb underneath his car only for his wife to start it up and be an unexpected casualty. No, Sergio needs a more personal touch and through the waves of enemies on the docks. <laughs> that was close. And the f I can't, I can barely take a sniper shot as is. Fuck you. Swear to God, if I have to go back too far, I'm gonna be pissed. We finally catch him and set him ablaze. When God stops smiling. God, that was a long, that was a decently long mission for once. With Sergio gone, Morello's top earner, all out war was on and Morello was finally coming out of hiding. So it was time to put an end to this war and also collect our 15th car, which feels like a gimme. Quite the collection. Collected 15 big, I mean, I mean, I didn't really put anything in the, in the garage, but maybe that's a gimme, you never know. 
the day the war ended. Salieri runs Lost Heaven now, but with power comes politicians wanting to eradicate the business, which cannot stand. He needs to go, so off to the old prison we go, sniper in hand and take him out. And this, this is really where I felt the brunt of classic difficulty in terms of standard gameplay, because this turns into a disaster. Escaping the prison, that's just fine. Can be a little tricky at times, but about the same as always. Well, you. F you. It's escaping the police where this gets brutal. Now to be fair, I wanted to have a 5 star police rating because I figured 2 birds 1 stone here. Might as well grab a miscellaneous trophy in the story, that being heat from the cops for losing the cops at 5 stars. Issue is, hot wiring a car at this rating is so incredibly luck based because you die in a couple of shots. So sometimes they'll let you get in a car and drive up the road. Other times you won't even make it in the car. Excuse me? And this was frustrating to the point it took me longer to finish this mission than the infamous race. How the f am I supposed to escape these guys? We did finally get lucky though. I'm not sure how or why, but we got there in the end. They just stopped spawning. Heat from the cops. Oh my good lord, lost the cops after accruing a 5 star police chase. That is on a classic difficulty, that might be the, uh, that's a luck based one. If you try and do it in this mission, I got lucky and just, they stopped spawning and let me get away. <laughs> and I figured since I was already messing with the police, what the hey, why not resist arrest as well while I'm at it. Not taken in. A view from the top. With boozing behind us, it was time to venture elsewhere, and Salieri got a heads up on some cigars impounded by Customs with diamonds in the boxes. On the way to Customs, Paulie lets Sam and Tommy in on some plans to rob a big bank, but is hushed by the two for now. Once we finally grab the cigars after sneaking through undetected, through a shootout, we learn that Salieri has broken his only rule. The cigars were a cover for dope. Into the lion's den. Selling dope, what a f***ing loser. With his faith in Salieri gone, Tommy takes Paulie up on his offer, and the two of them rob that bank together and get away with it, planning to meet up in the morning to split the cash and get out of the family. That last big score. All right, we're up to the final chapter. From memory, I don't think this goes very well for old Tommy. <laughs> Of course that doesn't go to plan either, and when we get to Paulie's we find he's been capped. Sam calls Tommy and sets a meeting point to talk. Again, no shocker here. Sam killed Paulie, Salieri knows Tommy let all those people live and went behind his back, and now Sam and the family are here to kill Tommy. Tommy being the badass he is handles them no problem, and it's here we finally reach the point we've been going back and forth between throughout the story. Tommy is talking to a detective to get Salieri and the family put away for good in exchange for him and his family to be put into witness protection. Tommy does have to do eight years in prison, but Salieri is put away, and after all those years, Tommy is free to reunite with his family. He gets to walk his daughter down the aisle and live a happy life. But yet again, we can't have nice things, and Vito Scaletta, Mafia 2's protagonist, finds Tommy and murders him in front of his family for Salieri. And that is the story for Mafia, and our classic difficulty playthrough done. Made man. Friends and family. Three for this one? A life of crime. Vito, Vito, Vito. What a game. What a fucking game, man. But now we get the fun part. Collectibles. <laughs> 
Now with the story done, it was time to head to free play and grab this platinum. Mafia, unlike GTA, has missions and the open world somewhat separate. There are opportunities to go explore the open world in missions, but it's easier just to go to free play to do so. And I was locked into the story anyway, so here we are. I decided to knock out the two remaining miscellaneous trophies first, one of which is for driving the Bolt Ace, an old slow as hell car and reach 50 miles per hour with it. Hint, you need some downhill speed to get that bad boy. Alright, buckle up boys. <laughs> this thing's gonna hit 50 miles per hour. <laughs> that motor can move, that's right it can. And second was simply for performing a wheelie on a bike for three seconds. Stunt Rider! With those two trophies out the way though, it was time to focus on completing Mafia's insane amount of collectibles. It's not Ghostwire Tokyo levels, but it's a whole lot. As I said, a lot of collectibles can be found in story missions, which is where you'll unlock these trophies for grabbing the first of each set of collectibles. Family History. We got a lot of, a lot of collectibles to grab. Pulp Fiction. Comic Violence. Hey, Gangsters Monthly, there we go. Psst, what the fuck is this? Mystery Fox Discovered. Like every collectible based trophy, however, Mafia's is very much a pull up a guide, watch some YouTube or movie or series, whatever, and turn your brain off type of affair. Outside of one collectible that is needlessly difficult to grab, What? Oh, I may as well have stayed in there. It didn't flip. I just want to get this one collectible. Why did they put it on a roof? Yes! <laughs> gotcha. Bitch. Oh my lord. But as the minutes turned to hours, we finally did start knocking out the collectibles. First, the cigarette cards. Alright, last cigarette card. Full set. One collectible set done, and we're not far off the rest. The copies of Gangsters Monthly. This should be the final Gangsters Monthly, which I think is a separate trophy than the rest. Yep, picture book connoisseur, the pulp magazines, which completed our collection unexpectedly as I still had to grab the final fox for another trophy. Alright, this is the final magazine. Lending library, and this fox is the final fox. Well, we got the whole story. Completed the collection, uh, we still have... A fox to grab, but maybe that's not a part of it. So this fox is apparently a prick to grab. I'm hoping I can do it first try. Oof. There we go. Mystery Fox Domination. All that stood between me and Mafia's Platinum Trophy now was cars. I needed to collect 30 different cars from my garage and I needed to find all 5 hidden cars. It was a little tricky to find which cars I was missing since so many cars look alike, but I did get to 25 before beginning the search for hidden cars, finding our first. This should be the first hidden car. So that would be a trophy for moi. And just four more to go. On the trail. All the way to our fifth, and just like that, our time with Mafia had come to an end. Hey, there we go. Motor Museum. Car Thief number one. And the original gangster. That's Mafia's Platinum Trophy in the books. And I cannot lie, I am, I am so ready to jump into Mafia 2 now. So, after 14 hours in total, that's 11 hours better than the guide, I just cannot be stopped. What did I think of Mafia's Platinum Trophy and the game in general? Let's start with the game itself, because holy crap, I was pissed at myself for taking this long to finally play the remaster. I was immersed in this game from the jump and didn't want to stop playing until 
I was done. The story is so well done, it gets you invested in the criminal life, makes it appealing, and does just a good a job of making it look miserable. The gameplay isn't perfect, the gunplay is a little awkward, and the driving is hit and miss, but being in this world is just so damn awesome and easy to keep playing for hours and hours. In terms of the Platinum, I'll say this. The collectibles are ass. They're not fun, they're never fun. But despite that, I still have a hard time believing this game won't be one of my favourite experiences for the year. The story is just too good, and playing on classic difficulty is mainly just a quality challenge. Yeah, it has moments of frustration, but it never feels insurmountable. This is not a perfect game or perfect platinum experience, but goddamn, if this isn't a must-play game, period. And maybe, just maybe, after those credits roll, you'll have to snag that Platinum Trophy too, because I am so proud I'm able to add this one to the collection, and I'm excited to pick up the series again real soon with Mafia 2. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far, make sure to leave a comment with Vito Y to let me know that you made it to the end. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like, because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more games you want to see get Platinum next, as well as your personal favourite Mafia game and Platinum Trophy. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support, and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, GNT Puppy, Jackie White, Nugget, Dark Wolf, Daniel Fitzgerald, Scott Unwin, Steel Vanguard, NPO Crusader, Zafado, Marcel, and Nef Nef. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, go give my socials a follow if you fancy, at Mayor Hair Bear. Join the Discord server to have a chat, go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum Journeys live, or Mayor Hair Bear VODs if those pesky time zones don't line up for you. And I'll catch you all in the next video.